Hey, the lone top tens here. The classic shows mentioned in this list not only bring back nostalgia for many, but are often regarded as being some of the most iconic programs in television history. The following focuses on the lesser known facts of these beloved sitcoms. All the while, um, all the while int integrating history and the changing of times. So that's why we put up a list of the top 10 lesser known facts about the most famous classic TV shows. Now, most of you older people out there will definitely know these shows. So if these shows are mentioned in this video, you might be lucky because you're going to be knowing a fact that you have never heard of. All right, let's start off with the number 10 about I Love Lucy. Long before I Love Lucy made television history, the decision of moving forward with the production of the show's pilot was faced with considerably dilemmas that could have potentially led to career suicide for both Lucia Ball and Desa Arnaz. Everything they had worked up until that moment came down to one decision. Play it safe or take a chance on the untried medium of television. The answer that would ultimately cement Ball as television royalty was manifested in a dream she had in which her deceased friend appeared to her. Ball recounts that in her dream, Hollywood actress Carol Lombard, Lombard appeared in a very smart suit and she said, Go on, honey, give it a whirl. Although Lucy not only became one of the most syndicated shows today, but is also credited for the invention of the rerun an idea Arnaz formulated following the pregnancy of his wife. That's pretty nice. All right, number nine is Jackie Gleason versus Fred Flintstone. The popular 1960s cartoon The Flintstones became a hit around the world, but was not only well received by one of television's most iconic actors of all time, Jackie Gleason, according to Alan Reed Jr., son of Alan Reed who voiced Flint Fr Flintstone, the Flintstones was inspired by the Honeymooners, taking on this short-tempered and overbearing characteristics of Gleason's vocalist Ralph Cadran, or Cramden. Gleason was none too pleased that the modern Stone Age family was patterned after his beloved show and contempt. Con oh, excuse me, um, I was having a little bit of amount of trouble. Um, contemplated suing the creators of the cartoon, although. Gleason's lawyers informed the actor that he could have made the Flintstones cancelled. They cautioned him that he would be known as the guy who yanked Fred Flintstone off the air. Understanding that many children and parents would be saddened, Gleason ultimately decided to let bygones be bygones. Hmm, pretty nice. Alright, number 8 is Delusional Fans. 328 Chauncey Street, apartment 3A, is the Brooklyn address that Ralph Cramden lived with his wife Alice in The Honeymooners. Unfortunately for Sherlyn Sher Conway, who shared the same address as the fictional couple, diehard fans of the classic show continued showing up on, at her residence well into the 1980s, hoping to catch a glimpse of Gleason's alter ego. However, this was not the first time fans could seem to separate real life from television. Shortly after Gilligan's Island first appeared in 1964, producer Sherwood Schwartz began receiving forwarded telegrams from the Coast Guard written by concerned viewers pleading them for the rescue of the stranded castaways. Apparently, the number of delusional TV watching adults who could not distinguish fact from fiction was more than Schwartz could have ever imagined. Schwartz said, there was even a laugh track in the show. Who did they think was laughing at the survivors of the wreck of the USS Minnow? It boggled my mind. Hmm. Alright, well, number seven is The Odd Couple's Odd Antics. So, when The Odd Couple first appeared back in 1970, viewers questioned the sexuality of Felix and Oscar, two men living as roommates in New York City. The character of Felix, played by Tony Randall, raised the most eyebrows, given his flamboyant mannerisms and interest in the arts. Worried that viewers would be turned off due to the continuous speculation, ABC executives made it a point in the show's intro to state that the roommates were divorced men. 
Actors Jack Klugman and Tony Rudolph, or Randolph, laughed at the expense of those who th thought the show was about gay men. In addition, they tested the patience on anxious producers and executives by improving or imp improvising many scenes of Oscar and Felix hugging and kissing. Most of the studio's displeasure, because it will be inappropriate, I would say. Alright, number six is Boston Busing Crisis. In 1974, a federal district court judge ruled that the Boston School Committee had unconstitutionally and deliberately segregated city schools. Therefore, a racial balance was called to order view busing students outside their neighborhood to other districts in an attempt to achieve a racial balance in the classrooms. Hmm, looks like I'm not getting too fun here, being racist. What followed was a citywide pandemonium shrouded in violent protest, riots, and anti-police sentiment. Welcome back, Cotter, a new hit show on ABC that focused on a racially mixed group of underachievers at an inner city high school, both the resentment of Boston officials. The National Education Association viewed the show's theme as dangerous, ultimately leading to the program being temporarily banned from being aired in Boston. Four years later, the once popular show was officially cancelled, following power struggles between the writers and the producers. Hmm. I can see why um, nobody watches that show in Boston. I'd say so. Alright, number five is the assassination of JFK. Everybody knows this day, November 22, 1963. Like the rest of the nation, the entire Hollywood industry came to a standstill in the wake of President Kennedy's assassination. Those in the performing arts felt close ties with Kennedy and following his death. Theaters closed, sitcoms and dramas were pulled, and production shoots were called off. Vogue Meter, a popular comedian known for his impersonations of the president, found his career in ruins after Verve Records halted the production of 100,000 copies of the comic's upcoming album. The very first episode of Bewitched was slated to be filmed on that fateful November day, ultimately being postponed for a later date. Perhaps the most po poignant reminder of the tragedy can be seen in the opening credits of Gulligan's Island. As the SS Minnow sails out of the harbor, countless flags can be seen in the background flying in half stat, given that the filming of the show's pilot took the place the week of the assassination. It's not fun. Not fun. Alright, number four is the Jefferson's Interracial Neighbors. Television producer Norman Lear was always striving to take his shows a step further, testing the limits of his viewers as well as studio executives when it came to the... <coughs> Sorry, guys. Now it's just a cough. Well, like I said, testing the limits of his viewers as well as studio executives when it came to the pro provocative nature of his programs. He did just that in 1975, when, for the first time in television history, two regular cast members were partners in an in interracial marriage. Although a white and black marriage was far from shocking in the 1970s, an interracial embrace between Rox Roxy Roker and Frank Cover, neighbors of the Jeffersons, was certainly on the norm for TV viewers. In fact, studio executives at CBS <coughs> CBS event, sorry if I mumbled that out, were so concerned about how viewers would react. They tried to have the kiss between Helen and Tom Willis edited out, but to no avail given the persistent l lobbying by executive producer Fred Silverman. Hmm. Alright, number three is the Ed Sullivan Show and Mental Illness. One of Ed Sullivan's proudest moments of his iconic show that spanned well over two decades came in 1953 when Broadway director Joshua Logan asked to speak about his struggles with mental illness. Terrified of CBS's reaction, Sullivan hesitantly allowed Logan to abruptly change the show's run in order to address his mental breakdown, subscribe to recovery, and the stenigma um, surrounding mental illness. Logan's address with the audience was met with momentary silence followed by an Ex exaborant applause. In the weeks that followed, Callis received, or CBS received Callis letters of appreciation 
including one from a Pennsylvania judge who claimed that the show possibly influenced one of his most recent court decisions. In addition, funding for psych psychotri psychiatric hospitals included due to Logan's appearance, solidified Sullivan's opinion that the Josh Logan story was the show's peak moment. It's pretty nice. Alright, number two is the Hogan's Heroes. Now, this show ran on CBS from 1965 to 1971, which was set in a German PO, POW camp, which is, stands for a prisoner of war camp during World War II. Although successful, the sitcom was heavily criticized given the actual atrocities that were committed during the war. Surprisingly, many of the actors portrayed the dim-witted German Nazis were Jewish, and all too familiar with the horrors of the war, Austrian actor Leon Askin, who played Jen Albert, or General Albert Burkhalter, escaped persecution fleeing to France, but lost his parents in a concentration camp, as did John Banner, who played the, um, who played the befuddled, um, Sergeant Schultz. Parzan-born actor Robert Clary, who played Master Chef and French Patriot, um, C.P.L. Lebeau, survived three years in the concentration camp. The death of Clary's parents forever haunted him. As he put it, once in a while, I think how my parents died. They went to Auschwitz and directly to the gas chambers. Sometimes I see their last minute and it absolutely kills me. Alright, we finally go into number one with Nixon versus All the Family. So, you may be wondering, White House audio tape seized by the FBI following the Watergate scandal receives, reveals a paranoid and delusional president who believed homosexuals and Jews were destroying the country. However, nothing wound Richard Nixon more than the hit show on the family. For reasons unknown, Nixon believed Archie Bunker's hippie son-in-law Meathead was bisexual, and the program was glorifying homosexuality. Although there was no reference or any hint in duels that Rob Rayner's character, who was married to Archie's daughter, was gay. Nixon held strong resentment toward the show he felt was supported by communists and left wingers in an attempt to ruin America. Nixon even went as far as to say that Aristotle and Socrates. Gay lifestyles contribute to the fall of Greece. I should say, but let me tell you something. It's not really the funnest thing ever. Because, obviously, these were the facts that you did know in classic TV shows. If you have any classic TV shows that I did not mention that had some facts that you didn't even know about, just let me know in the comments down below. Anyway, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, don't forget to like this video, don't forget to ring that little bell after you subscribe, ding ding ding, alright, and don't forget to support me on Patreon, view the link in the description down below. Alright, that is it for us guys, and we will see you guys next time in another Top 10. Take care.